just started it right now. So um, the irony being that first little intro isn't on there, but uh, necessarily not as important sometimes when we get going. The meat of it is what's really important. So uh, this will be available to everyone who had clicked the link the other day to get into this. I'll get that out to you guys uh, as soon as I can. Um, so you can pass it on to the rest of your teams if or recap some stuff that we're covering. Okay, so what I hope you get out of this webinar, uh, very straightforward. I want you to have concrete ideas you can implement right away. Things that you can go, what were we thinking? Or this is an awesome idea, let's do this. Okay, I love those things that you can just go out right away and do. That's wonderful. Uh, concepts and strategies to discuss with your team. Hopefully some of the things that I talk about here are items that you as an institution might go, maybe we need to think about this going forward because social media has really forced higher education to be disrupted with their marketing. Um, they, it was just kind of forced upon them and it and it's caused a lot of change which is good uh, because the change is being better to communicate with who you have as students or want to reach for students your community your stakeholders and who you're going to be trying to engage with uh, it's a really good for transparency as well i think so uh, very good disruption not all disruption is good disruption but this i think is and the last one, I really hope this is a good use of your time. You're taking time out of your day to be here and listen to me, and I think that's wonderful. I take great uh, value in that, and I want to respect your time and give you all good information. I'll save my stories of uh, camping and playing sports and stuff for another day. Today, we're all about social media. So let's jump right into it. The Facebook algorithm uh, reward system is really what you're trying to do with th getting the better organic reach. Okay, this is what you're combating because Facebook is for friends and family first. Facebook has this on their website that that is the primary focus of Facebook. So in the news feed, they are going to put priority to those types of posts first. So you are automatically, as a page, uh, almost like a second rank citizen because you are below those posts no matter what. So that's something to keep in mind. So you are in competition with all other pages for those second tier showings. Now, Facebook has an emphasis point on these two words, inform and entertain. If your post does those two things, the odds that it's going to get shown to people at a high rate is very, very good. Now, the question, and really, what it comes down to for, you know, what do they mean in form and entertain? What determines what is informative and what's entertainment? Okay, so that's really what it comes down to in the very end. Um, essentially, they are using uh, how people respond to your posts to determine if it's informative or entertainment or something else altogether um, such as spam or just not good information not relevant information so that's what they're trying to that's what they're using how people respond to it and so the purpose of this algorithm is to rank based on how people are responding to your posts to see what is going to show next so essentially, you're building up a history for your page based on what you posted, and that determines where your ranking goes for your next post. 
And each post is unique in and of itself, meaning you might not have been doing well in the past, but if you have new good content, you can turn it around. It's not like it's an abyss and it just keeps on going down and you can't get out of this endless spiral. But it does take time essentially to prove to Facebook that you are a place of good content and they should reward you by sharing your content with other people without you having to pay for it. Okay, that's the key. You know, you are in competition with other people. You can either pay a bunch of money to force it onto people. So maybe it's bad content, maybe it is good content. You're forcing it. The other part is if you do good content, Facebook wants your stuff to be shown to people because that encourages those people to come back to Facebook. You know, when was the last time you heard someone say, well, I haven't been shown anything good on Facebook and it's very, a lot of annoying posts and ads that I don't care about, but I'm going to keep giving it a try every day. You know, maybe it'll turn around for me. No, they have the users they have to make happy. So you have to make them happy to make Facebook happy with you. It's a weird cycle. <laughs> So why is this really important to brands? This reward system is extremely important to brands because not all content is equal. You make a post. That post is not just a post. There are all kinds of classifications to that post. It can be a text post. It can be a live video. It can be a carousel of posts there's a lot of different things and how those things relate to each other it's not all equal so no matter what content you even put in it innately they're at different levels and Facebook is always tweaking the system and that's the the part that really kind of gets on brands in general is they're changing things they're moving things around um, to make people more happy and as they introduce new features, they, they adjust as well. So there is ways to get ahead by learning what Facebook is doing. For example, when they came out with live content, with live video, when they first started doing it, they wanted people to use it. They wanted brands to use it, pages to use it. So if you did a live video, it didn't matter what you showed, you could have showed grass growing you could have done that it was going to get more reach automatically just because it was a live video and now people have abused that system where you see all those uh, essentially people are having pre-recorded videos being shown as a live video they are having static images be shown as a live video um, and those things where people vote using the reactions during a live video, which is actually a static image in interlaid. I mean, all those things have abused it. So now Facebook is cracking down on that. So the live video probably isn't going to get that same boost, organic boost that it used to. But what's really great is this is a system. This is a system uh, like anything else, it's a giant formula. So the more time you spend in it and the more effort you put into it, you can learn how to beat the system, essentially. You know, it's not like the house always wins. You can win as a brand. So that's something to think about. I want to emphasize this very, very much so. Nothing that we talk about here is a hack. I see all kinds of posts, people sharing, hey, this is a hack for this. Hack the system of Facebook. No, 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 no hacks. Okay. Hacks are just uh, almost just like a little fad term or something. It, it's not a real thing. They're not hacking anything. When I think of hacking, I mean people are coding in things to try and beat a system and break it. No. What you're doing is you are looking at what are areas inside of the formula and how you can make them work for you. That's all it is. It's not a hack. It's called strategy. All right? That's all it is. So nothing we're going to talk about here would I would ever call a hack. 
All right. Those that call them hacks, they are hacks. Uh -huh. I've that one I just came up with, and like the teacher in me, I think it's very funny. It's probably not. So, what does the algorithm reward? Because if you know what they reward, you know how to win. Engagement over a long period of time is what wins in the algorithm. Okay? It doesn't matter if you keep posting videos all the time. If you don't get engagement with those videos, it won't help you. The same goes for this other part. You do cannot let missteps hurt you, okay? Not every post is going to be a wow post. It's not going to be amazing and, you know, have tons of engagement. That's not going to happen, but don't let those missteps hurt you by doing too many of them or doing things that really are almost like self-inflicted, um, doing posts that you know are not going to go over well, that type of thing. Now, I'm going to share a couple examples here. Um, and now, keep in mind, these examples could have happened to anybody on Facebook. Any page, I bet, has done something that, you know, falls into this realm. So any higher education institution, I probably could have clicked on a Facebook page and found one that I can use. <clears throat> so I'm not making fun of them or anything like that. That's just part of the learning process. So here's one from uh, Drake University, and it's talking about uh, nominations for a Iowa Character Award. Now, it has two likes. This is posted well long ago. The liking is done. No one else is going to like this post. Only two likes, nothing else on it. Okay, first thing. If you have a post like this, get it off of there. Remove it. It's not helping you. Remove the post. Delete it. Okay. If you have one that has that level, get rid of it. Now, second, when I look at this post, my thought is what of this post is supposed to try and get people to want to engage? What What is it that's about this post that's making people want to go, oh, wow, I want to write a comment. I want to do this. I mean, you can have a, you can tag a person that you think has good character, but innately that means you're, the people you're not tagging might not have as good a character. And so that could be contradictory for you and a little not of an easy situation. Could put people in tough spots. So, I mean, it's not a really uh, engaging spot. It's a link to a web site, and that's all it is. So, that's not something that's going to bring up engagement. Now, this is where something, that's something I would see that goes in like a weekly newsletter of updates of what's going on on campus, maybe, or things to engage with in different areas, something more specialized or something that's part of a big list not something worthy of a of a post in and of itself okay i know posts seem kind of frivolous in a way but they are very unique and important and they need to be considered of each of an increasing value so the next one now this one here uh university of miami now i'm i'm putting this part on here they have over 247,000 likes to their page. The, the amount of comments is one at that point. Um, then the comment itself is also not a pleasant comment, which actually got two likes for that negative comment. And it did not get any shares. It only got a few engagements, very low for that number. I, I don't care if they're all uh, ones with hearts. That's very, very low. They should never have that level. And what about that is doing it? It's the post. The image is not flattering. All they needed to do was find a better image or wait until they had a good image of that person to post it. 
and that could have made all the difference in the world. Okay, so that's that's very important is making sure you are putting good content out there. Um, I'm a big believer anything that's even remotely blurry as an image never should go on social media. Okay, you as a brand are need to be better than that. As a school, you, you have higher standards or you should. So just something to think about there. So those are ones that, you know, not going to help you. So learn from your mistakes. When you're writing a post, check what worked and what didn't. Okay. Those posts, they're in their history. They should look back on them and, and see what's working, what's not. So when you're going to write a new post, here's what you do. Go to your publishing tools under the publish posts area there. So when you go to your page, there's a tab on the top that says publishing tools. And on the side, it says publish posts. So make sure you're in that area. Then there's a search box. This is all of your posts on your Facebook page. Search for your keywords. So if you're doing a new post about summer vacation or maybe welcome freshmen or whatever you're doing, okay, put those keywords in that post to find previous posts that were relevant to you. Okay, see which ones are good and which ones are bad and compare what you did. If you had one that did so amazing and you go, oh, it's amazing because of the content we had try to reproduce that I mean you can't do it exactly but try to take what you did well and make it work for you and if you did something that did not work don't do it again okay is it worth that risk probably not try something different so that's a wonderful way to really uh, improve and learn from your mistakes also, delete some of those really, if they're really bad, like the ones on the previous page, just delete them, okay? You're not helping yourself in any way by keeping that on there. Now, last thing, know the internet. People go to social media for many reasons, okay? They do not go to fill forms out, so that's not a good idea. Know what works on the internet, okay? What works on the internet? Puppies, babies, families, kittens, okay, funny things. For higher education, professors that are doing things that people would not normally consider stuff that professors do always seems to do well. If you have a professor that skateboards like a champion, get that out there. It, um, uh, there was a recent post, uh, just I just saw it the other day of a professor or uh, was a professor or dean someone at an institution who rapped at the commencement address okay if it works it works so those types of things are ones that you can take advantage of um, check and see what's happening on the internet on reddit and imgur to learn what's popular and a hot uh, type of mem out there those types of things you know, help yourself. You don't have to uh, try and come up with the most cool new thing out there on the internet. Um, sometimes it just happens. So, moving on. Metrics that are uh, a yawn, okay? Not all metrics, not all engagements are the same either. So, a Facebook post just because it gets certain types of metrics doesn't mean it's going to help you get better reach and help you with the algorithm all right so these are ones that are yawners likes they mean almost nothing now okay it used to be that people the more likes you get would be great for your engagement but now because people will like things at such a high rate, it means nothing and Facebook doesn't count that much or at all, which is kind of funny. I mean, people did so well at getting them that it almost then hurt them that we did so well at getting them. Simple comments. If a person puts a one word comment like yay or good or something like that, just like when 
you don't count those for discussion points in classes in higher education. The same falls for Facebook. They view that as just someone posting a comment to follow the post. And you've seen people do that probably in different areas where they, they'll just type following just so they get notifications on the post. And so Facebook discounts those simple comments. They don't mean much to it. They want sentences. They want people uh, adding content. So if you just tag people, it has much less effect than if you say a tag like, you need to check this out. And then you tag the person. That will have an impact. And this last one, and I'll have to explain this one really, uh, video views. You know, you post a video and it says you have 2,000 views. There are different levels of a view. The view that shows up at that main top tier where it says 2,000 or whatever, that is not a lot of time. All that means is they basically stayed, had that video stay on the page long enough to start playing for more than a second. That's that's really all it means. It was there for just a couple seconds. They did not watch the video. In fact, they might have just been looking at something else, not on the computer screen or their smartphone at the time, and it just happened to be where your video was at. Those videos views do not count to help you with your organic reach. They just don't. Now, you might think that getting a notification, because, uh, I mean, really, uh, people love those notifications when they get likes. Um, they like it a lot. It, it is really a big boost for your uh, serotonin levels. Um, but it is empty and hollow. They don't mean anything. And I know it kind of sucks because the people that are liking it, they actually think that, it is helping you and you and it's a good thing but it actually isn't doing much good in the end for you uh, so I, I it's kind of one of those things like man I wish they would make it almost harder to make it a simple like because people don't really realize that this is hurt this isn't really helping your page even though they think it is now this video here posted by the University of Texas Austin okay this should be a wonderful video it is from the intro, and the video has um, 9,000 views. But there's almost no comments. And when I looked at the that level right there in the middle where it says the likes and reactions, almost all of them were just likes. They were not at other reactions. So I can't... I can't see their detailed view history. I can't see how um, how many views past 10 seconds, past 20 seconds they had. But just going by those two things right there, I'm not going to bet it is a high rate, which is kind of funny because this is reliving what the Longhorns won during the year. I mean, it should be something that people want to see. So I think they need to go about that differently to get people to engage with it more. So, metrics that were bad, we covered. Metrics that are excellent. What metrics do you think that would help you? That's what we want to focus on. Conversions. All right, now this is where it ties to that website. If you put links and people click on them, that is awesome. They love that. Facebook has some things built in when you go to it. It says, you know, get people to go to a, a message you or something like that. If you put that in there and people are doing it, it is a major, major boost for your reach. It says you are engaging. People want to communicate with you. That's what that means. Okay. So those types of things are great. If you say for people to go and do this form, um, do a lead form or something, that, I mean, people that that is good conversions if they're clicking on the carousel links that's a good conversion now Facebook can help you track on the other side if they complete what they do if you set it up so you can set up Facebook with that pixel to go to your website and 
now the pixel has gotten really advanced I mean even from just a year ago it is amazingly more advanced you can have it track so it knows that if people are going and if that page you sent them to has a form or has a downloadable item on it that they're doing actions when they get to that page so then Facebook goes all right this is good content this is all tied together it's good content and so it will help you a lot whoops oh my bad uh, somehow it disappeared on me I think I clicked the wrong button All right, loading it back up. Sorry about that, folks. Hey, jumped right to it, so that's good. Um, reactions. Okay, I mentioned the like. No, 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 no. However, reactions, those other ones, it, and this one doesn't have the newest one, which is thankful, the little flower. Um, a like, laughter, sad, you know, angry. If they're reacting, then it, it shows they're more engaged because if you've ever done it, you know, you have to press on it, wait for a second, and then select the one you want. It takes more time. It involves more involvement from the person. So it means more to Facebook. <coughs> Sorry about that. Now, conversations is the last part. Now, you might be thinking, how on earth is Facebook tracking a conversation? Okay, a person posts a comment. Another person replies to the comment. You reply to them. They reply to you. It goes on and on. You're building a discussion. Facebook loves that. Remember I said the single word ones they do not like. But if you get conversation going, it is amazing what it does. Okay? You got to get that conversation built up. And long views. Okay, this one here, the same one, Texas. See, I'm not picking on schools. This one was amazing. Look at that. 96,000 views, 52 saves. That's another big one. If they save it, that's also a plus. Um, it counts as a conversion, in case you were wondering. Um, 7.5 thousand uh, reactions. Now, when I clicked on that, there was still obviously more likes than anything else. But the number of other reactions is really, really high. Okay, then uh, over a thousand shares. That's a conversion. Okay, that is amazing. And then when people shared it, when you click on that, you get to see what other engagement is happening on their page or their uh, profile if it's public. Um, I, I don't get to see the other ones, um, the people at University of Texas Austin do. Uh, I don't. But there's all this other stuff going on on those other pages so it just builds and then you you look they comment one person commented and the tech Texas responded that and then there was more replies that's a conversation that is what you're going for you want conversation okay that's why this one is doing so well this is a good one for them to use as a placeholder for ones they need to try and do like is honestly, I mean, it's it's fireworks, which is kind of cool in and of itself, because uh, it's has a, the number on it lit up. But I mean, the the video isn't even the best quality video, so I mean that didn't have anything to do with an impact. So now moving on a little bit, a side note here about Facebook. Um, most of you, I'm almost gonna bet, 90% of you use Hootsuite or Buffer, Sprout Social, Agorsa or something else to manage your postings onto Facebook where you send them through that site to post onto Facebook. I almost guarantee it, okay? Here's the problem. Facebook, eh, they're like, you know, a kid that really wants attention they don't get as much attention when you're doing that because they know you're not on your on their site doing stuff and it makes them feel bad so what Facebook will do is only the new features are available on Facebook so when you wanted to do a Facebook live guess where you had to go for a long time Facebook when you want to do a carousel guess where you gotta go Facebook okay 
they're trying to make you draw in to Facebook. They're, they want you there. Now, on, and because of that, what they're doing, and I mentioned this a little before, they're giving elevated status to posts that use those features. If you use a carousel, they're going to love that and boost your organic reach just because you use that. And if it's a wonderful post, it's going to do even better. Okay? That is how it works. And because so many people use third parties, these new features, these features only for Facebook, they stand out also. So that helps you as well. I mean, there's a reason you don't see Carousel uh, all over the place, despite the fact they do really well. It's because most people are posting through that third party tool, not through Facebook. So it sucks a little bit for management side, you know, if you have a large team, obviously, but incorporating those uh, tools inside of Facebook uh, through routine use is a very good idea okay it will help all right so now we've been talking about what is reach how to get some of those reach with uh, metrics and stuff let's talk about how to boost your reach successfully all right, because just clicking the boost button on a on a post is not going to help you just instinctually. Okay, you have work to do. So I have this method here is the one that I love. It's called organic paid organic. Okay, I I I'm not sure if that's a coin term or whatever, but I know I'm the only one that I know if I've said this around and I've haven't heard other people say that in in other places specifically like that so hey maybe I'll get something coined and and have a term OPO yo um, organic paid organic so what this means is you are not going to boost poorly doing post okay it's not like you're trying to help them get a running start or something like that if they don't do good with engagement just on its own don't boost it. Do not waste the money. Don't do it. Okay. It might be tempting to say, well, maybe if I shared this with some people, maybe it would help. No, don't do it. Okay. Take the posts that are doing great and boost them. Okay. Boost the ones that are doing good. Um, it's like this saying, take your skills that you are really good at and build on them and skill capitalize on them okay people don't necessarily make careers out of things that they don't do very well at they choose ones that they are doing well at okay same goal with this post choose the ones that are doing well doing great and then boost them okay and um oh shoot the little image didn't show up i had an image over here and so i'm going to draw it because i am very stubborn So what I had here, there is, this is the organic, okay? Okay, so this is your organic. Say you got 5,000 views initially um, from, or from the first uh, posting of it. Then you go, okay, this one did really good. So what you do is you add that paid to it, okay? And then let's make that look lower like a P. There you go. You add the paid to that. So you put however much money into it, and maybe you get another 4,000 or 5,000 uh, views and engagement off that. Now, those paid views, when they engage with that, the Facebook algorithm is also then going to come into effect and then increase the organic views based off of the paid so it's whatever audience that you engage with on the paid one now organic views with those new audience are going to happen so then you're going to get another dose of organic and that's a bad o sorry about that 
plus. Organic plus is what you get at the end. You get that extra boost. Okay, so just doing a paid, does it's not just the end of it. You're also getting an extra boost of organic. So it really should immensely help your reach by doing it this method, by doing a boost that did great and choose it well and go. All right. So that's my that's my wonderful uh, post, <laughs> my drawing. Gotta love it. Um, now that's one way. Another method, and this method is really really awesome. I it's it's so simple. A dollar a day keeps your account healthy. That's the whole method behind this. You put a dollar towards boosting every single day. The same post. Okay. This method was actually um, the person I heard it from, and I believe he's the one that came up with this concept, Dennis Yu, who is an amazing rock star with Facebook uh, data. He's wonderful. Um, certainly a, a top guy. And what you do is you just take your best post, so you look really long-term on your stuff. And this could be stuff from old time. Like You could be a, a post a year ago, just as long as it's one that's relevant and can hold true all the time not like a seasonal one so you wouldn't want to do this method with a post that is like Merry Christmas or happy holidays or you know happy Valentine's Day right uh, you don't want to do that but take the take a really really well performing post and get it boosted and just put it on a dollar a day forever no limit to the no end to this thing just a dollar a day and let it go and if you do it right with uh, the setup of the boost when, with your audience that you're choosing, it should continue to get new engagement for you every day. Not a lot, but enough to help Facebook go, oh, this person, continuous engagement on a really good doing post, and it will help you. It will help your account. Now, once you get going on it, um, Keep an eye on it because as long as it's doing well, you can keep running that ad on it, that boosted post ad on it. As long as the engagement's high, if you notice it starts to drop, change it up. Either um, don't do it at all or change the audience that you're, you're going after, something. All right? Now, the end result here, make sure you're choosing something that's of, of value conversion, okay, because that will help with the, the engagement metrics to provide you a lot of value in the end. So if you just have an, an image out there and you say, oh, we love this, you're not giving them enough opportunities to get those metrics, okay? All, if you get the, a couple levels, but you don't get the conversion as well. So you add that in there, make sure it's in that type of a post. So that way you get all the different aspects, okay? Now, I, when I was talking about doing the boosted posts, I mentioned audience a couple times. The target audience is the key to making your boosted posts work. So if you've been doing boosted posts and your organic reach is not increasing and you haven't noticed high engagement with them, the problem is with your target audience. That is where you're running into your issues almost 99% of the times because the target audience is the key cog. All right, so imagine you have gears over here that are related to content and you need good content to help this thing move. If you don't have good content, you know, it's not helpful. And if you don't have engagement, this isn't going to help your, your ad either. But the key thing is that target audience because if you don't have a good audience, it doesn't matter if you have the best content and and already have the best engagement. It's done. It's not moving anymore. Now, get, let me give you an example of this. Say you wanted to do a boosted post on something that was tied towards your engineering college. Okay? 
And what you did was targeted your graphic design art college area, okay? Your artistic folks. So your target audience are artistic people. Your post is for engineering, okay? It's not going to go well. I just guarantee it. Unless this is a collaborative tool, it's not going to go well. So you got to pick carefully and appropriately. So um, that's something that's really important. One sec, sorry. Oh, I dropped something. I needed to pick it up. My bad. Um, all right. So the target audience, it really, it is something that is so important to making things work for you uh, that without it, everything else will fall. So make sure you choose your target audiences. Now, here's the fun part for higher education. This should be easy. This should be easy as doing a cupcake walk where really your only job is to walk and walk and walk until they turn off the music and you sit. Okay, it's very straightforward. I have a three-year-old. He can easily do this. He was been doing, he's been doing that since he could walk. All right? So getting target audiences should be very easy for higher education because you already have lists and lists and lists of people. You have all the information. Businesses would literally kill to have the amount of information that higher education does on their audiences. You have lead lists from all over the place. You have sign-up forms. You have college fairs where you've gotten list of, of addresses from students, names, and things like that. And then you have your current students as well. You have all of these different people that you can have a very, very accurate idea of the audience. Okay? It, you, you can't go wrong with that. But now remember, not all groups engage well on Facebook in general. Okay? So you got to know which audiences do well on Facebook. And, oh, one second. Sorry, folks. All right, I am back. So sorry for that uh, break. Um, not all groups do well on it, and, and the, that's part of the learning process to learn which ones engage better with the other ones. And then the other part is not all posts engage well with all groups. Um, some groups are more extroverted than introverted, and, and that's a learning process. But the idea is you have such a wonderful base to build from that you should not run into problems with coming up with those uh, target audiences to go after. It should just be something that you have lots of access. <clears throat> In addition to that, um, not everybody has this feature yet, but it's a newer feature in Facebook. When you go to um, your publishing tools, you'll notice an area down at the very bottom where you can connect um, a CMS tool where you have your leads uh, with your admissions or whatever, group that, that controls them at your institution, and you can put them into your Facebook and build those uh, audiences just naturally. You don't have to do any extra work with it. So that's a nice new add-on that's uh, coming out to everybody. Then understand your audience even more. Once you have those, understand them more. There's a wonderful tool called Facebook Audience Insights. Just search for it and it's you'll get to it. It's actually inside of Facebook ads. So in order to get access to this, to really use it, you have to be an admin of the page. You have to have access to the data, the back data, all right? So what you do is you can choose your page likes or your custom audiences that you've built either by importing uh, files of, 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 of names or some other way through engagement tools to build your custom audience. And you can then see what is unique about this group. You learn all kinds. You learn their 
uh, general purchasing habits, where they live, other types of pages they like. Those types of things are what you can find it in this audience insight. And what's really awesome is say you have all the people who have liked your page and you go, I want to know um, based on who are probably our current students at this time. So you want to look at the 18 to 24 year old group and you click on that, it will take you, it'll, it'll hide everything else and just show you what that group has for their uh, interests, for their insights. It's amazing. Um, I am shocked that this is not a tool that most people have found because it can make your life so much easier because then you get those data points to help you know craft your message craft your target to reach more of people in that audience because if you know that your audience has a much higher rate of something than regular Facebook users you can use that to then better target those people. All right, so that is with boosting posts using those targeted audience. Now, this is boost without boosting. I know, I thought that was really clever too. And uh, target audience for post is the first one. Essentially, what the idea here is you can increase what the odds are that the people who see the post will engage with it. <clears throat> Essentially, you are narrowing down out of your total audience who could see this post, which is really useful because if you're posting about something that is not relevant to alumni in any way, shape, or form, you might want to try and keep them from seeing it because if they don't care, how are they, they're not going to engage and that's going to decrease your rate. That's going to hurt your overall because the peop the higher percentage of people who see your post and then engage with it, that helps. Okay, so the lower that is, the worse it's going to be. So there's two main methods. So when you go to write a post, and now keep in mind, this is another one. You have to be inside of Facebook to make it work. You can't post this with like Hootsuite or something and get the same level. When you type your post, right there, whatever you're sharing, you'll see a little targeted icon. And you have to turn it on in your page settings first, but that's where you'll see it then afterwards. And you get to choose preferred audience or audience restrictions. Now, preferred audience is one where using those um, audience insights on the slide before, are going to become very, very, very helpful because you choose interests of users that would like this post. So if this post is about sports, you know, you can then put the sports interests into here. So if a person has that as one of their diet, as one of their aspects of their um, Facebook profile that Facebook has determined, then they're going to be more likely to see it. And if they don't, they're going to be less likely to see that post, which is great because they don't probably want to see the post. And an audience restriction uh, kind of goes the other way with it, a little more extreme. You choose more demographic based and you say these people are the ones that will not see it. Or these are the people that want to see it. And that's what you choose. You say uh, ages 18 to 24, only people that can see this post. Boom. Just like that. So, I mean, it is huge for helping your reach get higher engagement and then therefore help your reach overall without even paying a penny. Okay, so it's a way of almost using your targeted audiences without actually having to pay to use it. Now, boost without boosting to engage your core, which... This is not the one I'm talking about necessarily. This is engaging your core but not the core that I'm talking about. Your other core, your team, your staff and faculty and students, and I mean active students in that they are active on your campus. Um, those that are volunteers for things, they're on your sororities, the fraternities, uh, those types of things. Get them engaged. 
okay? Make them work for you. <clears throat> One of the simplest ways is to essentially do a cohesive networked plan, a timed plan where you will have a post go out and notify everybody after it's scheduled to go, email, instant message, text, whatever you want to do, link it to them, get them to however you can and say, please do a comment, share this post, do a reaction, click the link, you know, in 10 minutes after you post it, that first 10 minutes, get them to really engage. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to convince Facebook this post is viral and it will organically boost that post like crazy. It will reach a large number of people. Okay? It'll reach a large, large number of people. So, we are... We are done. <laughs> that was a lot of stuff, and thank you to everybody for hanging on. I'm going to do a quick recap, and then if you have questions still, um, <clears throat> get them into the question box, and I will answer them uh, when you when we get done with this. So you can start posting those in there now if you haven't already. First, think long game. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, oh, it's very dry here. Uh, think the long game, but do not forget about the daily battles. You can't just go and say, eh, we're only thinking about the big picture. The, the little battles along the way make a big difference too. Focus on the metrics that matter and ignore the ones that don't. They are not near as relevant and don't let them drag you down with that side uh, distraction. If you boost, boost the best. Know your audiences, and then use your core to make organic go crazy. Okay? It'll work. So now, uh, if you have questions, you can post them in the Q&A box. <clears throat> um, I will take a look and see if I see some in here. I do see a, a couple in here. So um, first one in here uh, from Susan says uh, what if your best practice is to never remove posts because as a publicly funded university we're subject to FOIA and we don't delete posts because of that is there a way to hide posts where it won't hurt the algorithm now um, that's a good question now the, the reason for those is so you're not hiding things. That's a big part of the reason those practices were put in place. Now, I don't know specifically the FOIA uh, organization uh, or that. that. That's not one that I work with on a routine basis, or maybe I do, and I just don't know that the shorthand to it. But when I tell people to remove pay, uh, posts, there are ways that you can... Uh, keep it though. So I will screenshot anything that I delete. And I don't delete much. Uh, the idea is you don't want to delete a lot anyway. And I might have overemphasized that to begin with. But if you have one that you go, this is not helping in any way, um, I screenshot that. So that way I do have a record of it. It may not be on the page specifically, but I do, um, I do have it. Which is, which is very important. Um, the same goes for if you're dealing with people that are inappropriate. I do the same thing. I screenshot and then I delete. Because if they're inappropriate, it's not there for a reason. I mean, that there's no place for that. Okay. Um, let's see. Other questions? <clears throat> okay, here is another question from Rick. Where do... Okay, he's asking, where do you find um, when Facebook is making changes 
to its algorithm? That's a very good question. There's two main ways that I use um, to, to find when people are changing, the, when Facebook's changing its algorithm one way or another. Um, the first is Facebook developers page. They have a page for Facebook developers, for Facebook uh, core users, stuff like that. Um, you, you, they will post things in there and engage with you there. Um, they want to share the information. They're not trying to hide it, and they're they're a public inf uh, public company. So I mean, they they are sharing information about what they're doing to the algorithm, probably because if they don't, it will really upset their people uh, that are on it. If it turns out that they did something that they didn't notify people of. Um, the other place, and this is probably more simple, I find people that are very, very active, probably connected to Facebook in certain ways, the influencers, and I follow them, and they will almost always post when there are changes to the Facebook algorithm. Um, that Dennis Yu is one of those guys that is very tied in. Uh, he knows what's going on with the algorithm, so... If you see him go, whoa, this is changing, then it's something you need to be aware of too. Um, it's also easier to consume that information when it comes from people like him. So that is one uh, to do. Okay. Um, next question from uh, Judith. Uh, Judith. Um, oh, uh, sorry, not a question. Uh, she was saying, thank you for the Facebook insights. Uh, my jaw dropped. <laughs> um, appreciated. Uh, appreciate that, that your jaw dropped when you, you learned about that. I know when I first saw it too, same thing. It's a shocker that why is Facebook doing this and how do people not know it's there? Okay. Um, and those are the those are the questions. There's only a couple of questions, and then that lovely comment. Thank you very much for that. Um, so that's and if anyone else in here has a comment, um, would have more than happy to help. And you can also contact me later if you have questions too. Anything that would be wonderful, I'd love to help you out. Um, so let's. I'm going to jump back onto my webcam there. So thank you everybody that. Uh, were, was listening uh, to the future people who are watching this recorded. Uh, send me questions if you have any, and I hope you got a lot out of it. I hope this was really worth the time, um, and you have a very wonderful day. Enjoy the weekend, and um, I hope to see wonderful things happening on your guys' Facebook pages. So thank you all.